Good morning. Today we are doing 4.1, which is on graphing, and we are going to be graphing parabolas at first. And um, a parabola is a conic section formed by an intersection of a right circular cone and a plane parallel to the side of the cone. Every parabola has an axis of symmetry, and what I mean by axis of symmetry, it's a line that goes through the vertex right here, and um, if I folded this parabola along the line, I'd have exactly the same thing on both sides. Um, so axis of symmetry, and it actually is a line, so you have to write it as x equals whatever, okay, whatever your um, x part of your vertex is. And um, every parabola has a vertex. In this case, if it's opening up, it has a minimum because that is the lowest point. If it is opening down, it has a maximum because that's the highest point. And remember that if it is opening up, A is positive. And if it is opening down, A is negative. When graphing a parabola in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and a cannot equal zero, um, I'm going to ask you to find certain things, like the x-intercepts. And we have four ways of finding those intercepts. The first way is to factor it, which is easy, but it doesn't work all the time. We saw back in chapter one that there were a few things that we couldn't factor. We had to write down prime. Um, so usually I take a quick look at it. If I think I can factor it, I'll go after it that way. Um, that's, you know, I always look for factoring first because it is the easiest way to do it. The next way I would look for is the square root property. Again, this one is fairly easy, but I do not use it if I have the B term. So if I have that middle term right there, I do not like to use the square root property. Um, the third one here, the third way I would do it is the quadratic formula. This works for everything, okay? It works all the time. And here's our formula over here. And then the last way I would do it is completing the square. It does work all the time, but um, it's a little harder than all the rest of them. And one of the main reasons I might use this one is if um, I needed to find the vertex as well, but I have other ways of doing it. And I definitely wouldn't use this one if my middle term was an odd number, if the coefficient was odd, because then you're starting to work with fractions and I just don't want to do that. Okay, so these are the ways of finding the x-intercepts. You get to pick which way you want to do it. It's up to you. Then I want you to find the vertex. And we have two ways to find the vertex. Um, vertex form. If we get it halfway through the problem, if we were using completing the square, it is in vertex form at that point. And if it is in that form, we can go the opposite of h, that's our x part of the vertex, and our k, it's the same. And this would be our vertex right here. Okay, and if um, we're not interested in using the completing the square method, we can use the vertex formula, which states x equals negative b over 2a. And then once you found the x part, you, um, x part of your um, coordinate for um, the vertex, you substitute that number back into your original equation to find the y part of your vertex, okay? And then we um, also need to find our x-intercept. And to do that, we just substitute in um, zero for x. Every time we see an x, you put in a zero, and that will give you your y-intercept. And then the axis of symmetry. Again, this is a line. 
If we fold the parabola along that line, the two halves would match. And notice we use the same formula that we do for the vertex up here because that um, axis of symmetry is a line that goes right through the vertex and it's the x part of it. So x equals negative b over 2a. All right, so let's try a problem here. I want you to graph y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. All right, so the first thing I always do is I look for the vertex first. And these are the things you need to find. X-intercept, Y-intercept, vertex, axis of symmetry, and then we're going to graph it. So I like to find the vertex first. Let's try our new little formula. So that formula goes X equals negative B over 2A. So in this case, we need to identify our A, B, and C. Well, only A and B, but I always do C as well. So A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 3. I'm going to plug them in here, and that would be 1 and negative 2, and um, 2 times the 1 is going to give me 2, so X is negative 1. All right, that's the X part of my vertex. Now I need to go and substitute that back in up here to find um, my y. So y equals, I'm going to have negative 1 squared plus 2 times that negative 1 minus 3. Negative 1 squared is 1. That's going to be a negative 2 and a minus 3. Okay, so that is going to give me what? A negative 4. All right, so x is negative 1 and the y is negative 4. So my vertex here is negative 1, negative 4. It needs to be written as an ordered pair because it's actually a point. Okay, so let's put that on our graph. Negative 1, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. All right. So one of the next things I like to do is look to see if this opens up or down. My leading term right here, that A is positive, so it's opening up. So I know I have some x-intercepts and I'll need to go find those. But I'm going to do the y-intercept first just because that is so easy. So my y-intercept, I just put in zeros every time I see an x. Okay, so 0, 0. All that I'm left with is a negative 3. So my y-intercept is negative 3. So right here. Okay, let's go find um, my x-intercept. So I take a good look at this. Um, do I think I can factor that? Factors of negative 3, that would give me a positive 2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can factor that. So I'm going to um, do, um, when you're looking for your x-intercepts, your y is 0. And this one will become x and x with a positive 3 and a negative 1. So if I multiply those two together, that's going to give me a negative 3. If I add those two together, it's going to give me the positive 2. Then I'm going to use my zero factor property. This one will give me a negative 3, and that one gives me a positive 1. So my x-intercepts are negative 3 and a positive 1. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and a positive 1 right there. Oh, my axis of symmetry, we already found that, right? This is the formula for axis of symmetry. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. Make sure you have that x equals. And then you actually have to draw the parabola. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay? All right. Let's try another one. So in this case, I have f of x equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 5. All right, so I always like to start with that vertex, so let's go do that. Vertex, um, and that one 
or the x equals negative b over 2a. All right, let's identify our a, b, and c. So a is going to be negative 1, my b is going to be negative 4, and my c is 5. All right, let's plug those in. The opposite of negative 4, so that's going to give me a 4, and this will give me a negative 2, so that is a negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 is the x part of um, the coordinate there. I take that and I'm going to plug it back in up here. So y equals negative, okay, here's an x, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times that negative 2 plus 5. Okay, that's going to give me a 4, or if our person says I have to do that part first. So 4 and the opposite of it is negative 4. That's going to give me a negative 8, or a positive 8, sorry, positive 8, and back here a positive 5. So that's 4 plus 5, that gives me a 9. So my vertex in this case is going to be negative 2, 9. And my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 2. All right, let's put that on our graph here. So negative 2, 9. Negative 2, 9. Oops, I don't have enough space here. So I can rewrite the um, units here. I can go by 2s. You just have to be consistent. Okay, so that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I said it's 9, so we're going to put it right here. All right, so I have negative 2, 9 on there. It is opening down, so yes, I am going to have x-intercepts. That negative tells me right there it's opening down. Um, let's go find the y-intercept because super easy. Okay, so if I put a 0 here and a 0 here, all I'm left with is 5. So my y-intercept is 5. So 2, 4, 5. So it's going to be right there. All right, x-intercepts. All right, so notice I didn't mess with this negative when I went to go find the vertex. Just whatever you have right here, let it be, all right? Now, to go find my x-intercepts, I do not want that leading coefficient to be positive, okay? So I'm going to go 0 equals negative x squared minus 4x plus 5. Remember, I put the 0 in here because my y's are 0 when um, I have an x-intercept. Don't want that, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 1. It's going to change all the signs. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. All right, now I need to look at this and see if I think I can factor that. That's always the first way I go because it's super easy to do that. Um, yeah, I think I can do it. A five and a one will give me a four. Okay, so in this case, I am going to have an X here, X here, a plus five and a minus one. If I multiply those two guys together, it's gonna give me a negative five. If I add those two guys together, it's going to give me a 4. So now I use that zero factor property, and this will give me a negative 5, and this one's a positive 1. So my y-intercepts are going to be at negative 5 and a 1. All right, let's put that on there. So the 1 is right here, and a negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I get this, okay? Now what if I wanted you to find something like f of 1, like that, which is one of the homework questions. I'll do something like this as well. So all that you have to do is go up here. Every time you see an x, you're going to put a 1 in there. So I'll have the opposite of 1 squared minus 4 times the 1 plus 5. Okay, so that's going to give me a negative 1 minus 4 and then plus 5. 
So negative one minus four is negative five plus five. That's gonna give me a zero. So at f of one, it should be zero. Oh, and there we are, we had that. Okay, good job. Let's try another one now. All right, this one is in a slightly different form, okay? So looking at this right now, I can find my vertex super easy just looking at it. Remember our vertex formula? Let me find it back here for you. If it is in vertex form, the opposite of H and the same as K, okay? So my vertex in this case would be one and three, one, three, okay, one, one, two, three, right here. Is that opening up or is that opening down? Well, it's opening up, right? Because that's a positive two. So if it is opening up, it is not gonna have any x-intercepts, okay? Because it's going this direction up here. So I don't even have to bother finding those. Okay, axis of symmetry, all I have to do is look at my vertex here and go, okay, that is x equals one. Um, there are none on the x-intercepts, y-intercept. Now, don't just go, oh, it's three back here because this one's a little bit different. We have to replace our x with zero, okay? So I have two, zero minus one squared plus three. That's gonna give me a negative one in there, right? And when I square that, it will give me a positive one, positive one times that two. So this whole thing up here is gonna be two plus three back there, that gives me a five. So my y-intercept is five. So um, what is that, three, four, five, right here. And because it's symmetrical, we should know that that goes right there. And we'll get this, okay? So that's not too bad. Um, so one of the reasons I like to go find that vertex first, is so I can put that on, then I look up here to see if it's opening up or down. And depending on the way it's going, I might not have to go find those x-intercepts, okay? All right, let's take another um, problem here. I got this here. So my vertex, just looking at this, I know it is negative two, four. My axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals negative two. So negative two, four, one, two, three, four. It is opening down, so I am going to have x-intercepts. Okay, so um, as I'm looking at this, you know, I could foil it all out, distribute, combine it all together, or isn't this halfway through the completing the square process? Okay, so if I look at it that way, I'm gonna re replace this f of x with zero. I'm just gonna rewrite this right here. All right, move the four over. So that's going to give me a negative four equals the opposite of x plus two squared. Let's get rid of the sign here by dividing both sides by negative one. So now I have four equals x plus two squared. Okay, let's use that um, completing the square. You know, um, well actually right now we're using the square root property. So take the square root of both sides. I like this on this side. So x plus two equals plus or minus square root of four is two. Do not forget that plus or minus. Let's move this over. So x equals negative two plus or minus two. Okay, and let me see now, what are we doing on this one? Um, do it twice. So negative two plus two gives me a zero. Negative two minus two is gonna give me a negative four. So zero and negative four. So zero, negative four, one, two, three, four, like 
that. Zero, negative four, my y-intercept. So if I put a zero in here, that gives me a two squared, which is um, four. The opposite of that is negative four. Negative four plus four gives me a zero right here. And we could have, um, or should have seen that when we were putting our point on right there. Okay, does so that make sense? All right, next one. Okay, I wanna graph this here. So let's find that vertex. Let's go um, x equals the negative b over 2a. In this case, my a is one, my b is negative four, my c is negative four. Oh, and one thing you should always do is make sure that this is in standard form first, okay? All right, so that is going to give me a four over two, which equals two. So my x is two. Take that, put it back up here. So that's going to give me um, y equals, if I put that in there, that's gonna give me a four. That's gonna give me a minus eight. And then I have the minus four. So that is going to give me, what, a negative eight? So here, my vertex is going to be two and negative eight. Remember to write it with a, um, as an ordered pair. So you do need those parentheses there. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals two. It's a line, so you do need that two right there. All right, my y-intercept right here, if I put zero in here and zero in here, and we have a negative four. So let's take a look at what we got so far. Two, negative eight. Oh, got playing room down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. Okay, I'll make that longer. Um, Y-intercepts happening at negative four. One, two, three, four, right here. All right, so now I need to find my x-intercepts. I'm taking a look at this up here. Factors of negative four that would give me a negative four. I don't think I can do it, okay? Because I have a four and a one. I can get a five and a three out of that. Um, I have a two and a two, which will give me a four but they would both have to be, well, one has to be positive and one has to be negative. They will give me a zero or, um, yeah. So I can't do that. I cannot factor this easily. So I am going to go straight to the quadratic formula. So in this case, my A equals one, my B equals negative four, my C equals negative four. The formula goes x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, let's plug it in. So I got a 4 plus or minus square root. That's going to be a 16. That's a negative 4 times a negative 4. So positive 16 over 2. So now I have four plus or minus 32 over two. 32 really is 16 times two. So now I have four plus or minus four square root of two over two. Let's factor a two out, okay? So I'll have two, two plus or minus two square root of two. Notice I'm not dividing that one by two and this is over two. So these guys cancel out and that is my answer. So that is the best answer to put up here because that's the most accurate and that will let whoever wants this information to round it to wherever they want to round it. Okay, then if I stick that in a, um, calculator, 
I'll get like a 4.83 and a negative 0.83, okay? So we're just gonna eyeball where we're putting those on here. So 0.83 or a negative 0.83, eyeball it right in there. And a 4.83, so that's almost five. One, two, three, four, five. And then back it up a little right in there. Okay, so we'll get something along that lines right there. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Okay, I want to graph this one here. Let's find our vertex first. And since um, it's not in vertex form, I'm gonna use the vertex formula where x equals negative b over 2a. My a in this case is negative three, my b is six, and my c is zero. So that's gonna be a negative six over a negative six, which gives me a positive one. Now I'm gonna take that one and plug it back in here. So I square it's gonna give me one times the negative three, so negative three, put it in here, plus thir six. So that's gonna give me a positive three. Okay, so in this case, my vertex is going to be um, one, three. Okay, let's get that on there. One, three, one, one, two, three, right there. Okay, my axis of symmetry is gonna be x equals one. That means we got a line going right down there. Okay. Uh, my y-intercept, if I put zero in here and a zero in there, I'll have a zero. So I know my y-intercept's right here, my x-intercept. Okay, so now we go back up here. I put a zero in for f of x. Then I have, um, I'll just rewrite this right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to factor out a negative 3x because I think I can you know factor this and I'll be left with an x minus 2 and that's equaling 0 when I set this one here to 0 that's going to give me a 0 and when I set that one to 0 it's going to give me a 2 so my x intercepts are at 0 and 2 like this and there you go. All right, that's it for um, this section. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.